could not make it in today, so once again, they had the IT guy try to be the performer. We're going to have a blast today. I have some great trivia that's sure to test your knowledge. But before we get started, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Linker, as per usual, for giving us these awesome heatwave sunglasses that you all seem to love so much. So be the quickest to answer all five questions, and you will be the new owner of these awesome glasses. Today, where we're going, we don't need roads. That's right, it's back to the future time. And remember, if you miss a question, jump in your DeLorean and go back in time and stop yourself from getting that question wrong. Or just buy back in using the second chance button. Up to you. All right, let's get started. We love Back to the Future here at Linker. In the first movie, Marty accidentally goes back in time and accidentally stops his parents from meeting each other, effectively canceling himself from existence. So, for Q1, in the first Back to the Future, Marty McFly goes back, to, uh, back in time to what year? 1919, 1955, or 2007? There can only be one answer. Remember, this movie came out when DeLoreans were the coolest car imaginable. Well, maybe they still are. I don't know. I kind of wish I had one. That's true. I actually really do like the DeLorean. Marty goes back 30 years from 1985, so it must be, yes, 1955. Looks like you got seven correct on that one, zero incorrect. Don't be afraid to buy back in, people. Come on. The other two movies feature Marty in different years, but more on that a little later. At the Enchantment Under the Sea dance, Marty winds up showing off his guitar skills trying to get the party started so his parents can feel a romantic connection. Of course, the song he picks is a little too much for the straight-laced crowd. For Q2, what song does Marty play at the Enchantment Under the Sea dance? Is it Rock Around the Clock, Johnny Be Good, or Jailhouse Rock? Hmm. Wonder what it could be. Hmm. It's a hard one. The band's original guitarist hurts his hand, knocking out Biff, so Marty volunteers to step in. The band asks him to play something that really cooks. You'd think, being an 80s kid, he would have played some Van Halen or something, but instead he opted for Johnny B. Good. Looks like we got five correct there, two incorrect. Some percentiles that I don't want to read out. The actual Johnny B. Good was released in 1958. Hmm. That's, pretty, that's a long time ago. <laughs> the events of the first film also involved getting back in the time machine, or getting the time machine back in working order. But in 1955, it's nearly impossible to generate enough electricity for it to run. For Q3, how much electricity was needed to power the DeLorean? Was it 1.21 gigawatts, 1200 gigahertz, or 1.5 million volts? Hmm, that's a hard one. Generating this much electricity would be nearly impossible without modern technology. In fact, the easiest way would, re would probably be to, be, uh, to rely on a predictable bolt of lightning, which Marty and Doc do when the light lightning famously strikes the clock tower. They needed exactly 1.21 gigawatts. Looks like we got three correct there, two incorrect. No worries, no worries, just buy back in. Getting to Q4 now, no worries. 1.21 gigawatts of electricity could power roughly 100 million light bulbs. Just in case you ever need to do that, now you know. Let's talk about Marty's friend, the crazed scientist Doc Brown. It's unclear how these two became friends, but there's no better bonding experience than traveling through time with someone, I guess. For Q4, what is Doc Brown's first name? Is it Elliot, Steve, or Emmett? Two E names might be a little bit of a hint for you. Doc Brown is known for his eccentric manner, calm naiveness, crazy hair, and most notably trying to screw some terrorists out of a ton of money. He pays that price. Uh, he pays the price for that in the first film, which sparks the whole series of events. His actual name, though, that's right, everyone. It is indeed Emmett. Looks like we got three correct again. Those three holding out and one incorrect. Sorry if you bought back in. 
The magazine Empire named him the 20th greatest character of all time. I wonder if that's films and like books and all characters. It's a pretty good stat of truth. Doc also has cute, a cute little sheepdog in the movies who joins in on the adventures. In fact, this dog is actually the first being ever to travel through time, as Doc tested the DeLorean on him first. That's unfortunate. He also named, uh, he's also named after someone quite famous. For your last question, what was the name of Doc Brown's dog? Is it Edison, Newton, or Einstein? Some smart lads. I wonder which one it was. When we meet young Doc in 1955, he is another dog named Copernicus, so he must have a thing for naming his pets after famous historical figures. His dog in 1955 is named after the guy who came up with EMC squared, and that is, of course, Einstein. Looks like we got one correct there, one incorrect. Oh, you know what that means. Congratulations to today's winner. You answer all five questions correctly and will be receiving these sick heatwave laser face glasses brought to you by Linker. Looks like our winner there is Sep1951. Make sure to visit your wallet on the Linker app to claim your prize, and you too could look as fly as me right now with my double glasses. They call me Six Eyes. Great, Scott. That's all the questions we have for our Back to the Future game. I would like to give a big thank you to everyone for playing and to our event sponsor, Linker. Oh, if only we could go back in time and play it again. Don't forget to subscribe to my event feed to stay up to date on our upcoming events and get reminders when it's time to play. And remember, you're all winners in my book. Cheers.